two dead and over 20 injured in Islamist shooting at Norwegian gay bar in Norway. On June 25th, two people were killed and 21 were injured by a lone gunman in a shooting incident at a gay nightclub in central Oslo, Norway. The authorities suspect the shooting to be an act of Islamist terrorism. I say terrorism because of the YouTube algorithm. We mean, you know, violent radical extremism. Um, a 43-year-old man, Zanyar Matapur, a Norwegian citizen of Orion origin, has been arrested for the attacks and charged with murder, attempted murder, and acts of terrorism. Jonas, uh, Jonas Garstore, Prime Minister of Norway, called the cruel act of terror, quote, a deeply shocking attack on innocent people. Oslo District Court declared Zaniar Matapur responsible for the murderous attack and is held in pre-child detention for the next four weeks. According to a report, Matapur suffers from mental illness and is a fundamentalist Islamist. The police found out that the, sus the suspect had previously partaken in extremist Islamist Islamic groups. They first became aware of the sus suspect in 2015 on suspicion of being a radical Islamist. Um, so obviously this is a horrific thing to happen in general but for the lgbt community this is particularly heartbreaking because this happened you know in pride month and this is supposed to be the month where we celebrate the strength that it takes to come forward in societies and communities that have usually shamed us and made us hate ourselves for the people who we love and are attracted to. And so this event happened. Yeah, two people were killed, dozens injured um, at a gay bar. And then subsequently, Pride in Oslo got canceled. And um, it's nevertheless, there were hundreds of people that came out despite Pride being canceled as a protest. And, you know, really tearfully chanting and sharing slogans to say, you know, we, we're here, we're not going away. It doesn't matter how you terrorize us. Like, we are not going back in the closets. And we are going to live as vibrantly as we did before. You know, um, it's uh, something that definitely affects me um very deeply as a member of the lgbt community um i think about what i went through as an american when the shooting at um, the pulse club in orlando happened um and how i felt so scared to go to pride that year because all of a sudden it feels like there's a target on everyone you don't know um but I made the decision to still go anyways because it's so important to be visible and not live our lives in fear. Um, it's just really, it's horrific. It's horrible. Um, Armin, do you have any initial reactions? Because there an, there's an angle of this that I also want to get into. I mean, it's just horrible, right? And mm -hmm. I don't know how to... I'm 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 very bad at like expressing how tragic a tragic event is because it just seems so obvious that it doesn't need to be said, but obviously it does need to be said. But yeah, I just um, I agree with everything you said. I I wonder, uh, do we know if this guy was part of a bigger group or acted upon itself? Do we know specifically what? Brand, what version of Islamism was this guy under influence of? Do we know anything about that? Like, have mm -hmm. we seen? Because the fact that he was or Iranian origin um, makes that me wonder. Me. Um, yeah, because there are um, radical groups that are come out of Iran. Usually, do they have different targets, right? Than the Sunni ones. Like, I, I mean, I'm assuming this guy was Sunni. Like, I don't know. It, my biases are showing here because I'm mm -hmm. assuming that even though this guy is Iranian, the fact that this he did an attack like this, to me, suggests that he must have been Sunni. But I might be wrong about this. Like, do we, even though he was Iranian, he was still Sunni. 
because so Shia, I, I'm not, but I'm again, I'm not being biased here because I'm not saying that Shia groups don't have radical attacks like this. They do, but the targets are often different. They have different motivation. They have the different kind of people they attack. But anyways, get going. So I'll read some information in terms of his background that is available so far. You know, investigations are going. This may change. So keep that in mind. The suspect is identified as 42-year-old Norwegian Iranian Zaniar uh, Matapur, who moved from Iran to Norway in 1991 when he was 12. According to the public broadcaster NRK, Matapur had been in contact with Afran Bati, an Islamist extremist with several violent convictions. On oh. the 14th of June, Bati, who is known to represent Eldon in the past, I don't know who Eldon is, posted burning a rainbow flag with a caption calling for the um, uh, Kain. I don't want to put these words so closely together on YouTube, uh, for the Kain of LGBT people on Facebook. Bati is a leading figure of um, Profetens Ulma, which has been, which has recruited people for the Islamic State. Verdun's gang reported that Matapur had been stopped by police in April when he was seen at, in the same car as Bati. The police later confirmed that they had known of the suspect since 2015, believing that he had been radicalized into Islamic extremism. Matapur had an extensive criminal background to drug and assault offenses, but had only received minor convictions prior to the attack, according to a Norwegian prosecutor. His mother said that he had previously been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. So what I find interesting is he came from Iran as a child. So there would be less of the Shia influence in his adult life, presumably. And then of the people that he was known to be found affiliating with, they were Sunni extremists. Not well, to, yeah. yeah, be, I don't know. I Now it sounds like I'm just like playing cover for Shiism because everyone knows I'm yeah. a secret Shia, but. <laughs> yeah, this just confirms that you're doing all this time, Susanna, as a secret Shia. But no, Thank like seriously, gosh. yeah. So no, as we, I mean, I didn't know, but it confirms that this guy was more under, uh, Sunni radicalism, even though he was Iranian, he was not under the influence of Shia radicalism. This is not a defense. Again, just to make it clear, there are a lot. Of, there's technically, I think there's more victims of Shia radicalism. Okay, it's just that their victims are usually around Iran. Okay, um, and they're mostly Sunnis. Okay, the victims of Shia terror attacks are mostly people in the Middle East. Okay. And there's a lot of them, probably mm -hmm. a lot, you know, there's a high number of them. Okay. So we're not defending Shia Islam here. I just, this just sounds like something a Wahhabi extremist would do. And this guy, even though he was Iranian, he was under the influence of um, I, ISIS. So that confirms that. Or at um, someone known to affiliate and recruit for them. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Um, but th I think that almost confirms it. Um, you were saying he was also mental, had also mental issues, right? According to his mother, he had been previously mm -hmm. diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. So this reminds me of the other angle that I wanted to talk about this on. So last week, you talked on the Secular Jihadists channel, you talked to a YouTuber called Friend Friendly Muslim. And Friendly Muslim brought up this incident, and he said... You know, when these mass shootings happen, if the perpetrator is a Christian who has mental illness, the media doesn't stick on the fact that he's Christian. They stick on the fact that he has a mental illness. But in this case, they, they're they sticking on the fact that he's an Islamist, he's a Muslim, but, but we know that he has schizophrenia. Doesn't that seem like unfair targeting or unfair bias against the Muslim community? And at first I was like, I can see what the point he's making. But then upon researching this incident, I'm like, no, this isn't just the media harping on the fact that this guy comes from a Muslim background. It's he actually has a record with the police. That, that, that doesn't seem like unfair bias towards the Muslim community at all to say, no, this guy legitimately had, according to the investigation, links to affiliates and people who recruit for ISIS. Like that's not targeting the Muslim community. That mm -hmm. it, or unfairly reporting the mental illness versus his Islamist connections. Do you and do you think I'm wrong? No, you're right. You're right, and they're also mentioning the mental illness part. Like it's not like they're hiding it. 
are they not hiding? Are they not mentioning it? Like it's, it's in the news. It's everywhere that is reported. They're mentioning this guy's history with mental illness as well. And again, the answer is which one is responsible, Islam or mental illness? The answer is both. The answer is both, okay? I don't think this guy would do this, okay? I might be wrong here, but if the guy had only mental illness and no Islam, I don't think this would happen, okay? And I think also with this guy specifically, if they had Islam and no mental illness, I also think this wouldn't happen, okay? I think it's a, like, I think there's so many people that like want to defend Islam. They're like, oh, this is just because of mental illness. Islam has nothing to do with this, okay? And I think a lot of people on our side also like, oh, this is just Islam. This is def only Islam, okay? Like, well, no, pro mental illness probably also had to do with this, okay? They're both, these are both, and, and they actually, they, 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 they exaggerate the influence of each other. Like they make each other worse. They have a negative influence of each other. Okay. You know, religion, when added to anything, it makes that thing worse. Okay. So you have mental illness. It's already bad. You add some religion to it. Okay. It becomes a lot worse. It poisons everything that you add it to. Okay. Including mental illness. Yeah. This, I don't know. I, one thing that this also makes me think about um, is that, oh yeah, D is saying they're reporting honestly. How you deal with it reveals your bias. Very good point, D. Um, one thing that this makes me think about is, this is, like, I'm bringing you guys into the queer world, okay? So as a member of the LGBT community, there's a huge debate and contention within our community, specifically in America, about police at Pride. Um, the more far lefty you are in the LGBT community, you will completely reject any police presence at Pride. And I used to be one of these people because the first Pride was a riot. This is just a fact. Look up the Stonewall riots. And it was an anti-police riot. Um, and it was the impetus for the first Pride because it was people rejecting um like police harassment and standing up for themselves and saying, I'm not going to get into the history of the Stonewall riots anyways. And nowadays in lights of events like this, I think it is so naive for the LGBT community to demonize the police when we have people who target our community in deadly ways like this. There was also that incident that happened in Idaho pride where all those white supremacists, you know, were caught right before they were about to do God knows what at the Idaho pride parade, you know, extreme with just gut, like weapons to the teeth, terrifying. And so to say, no, we shouldn't have any police at pride when they're in San Francisco, there are almost a million people come to pride. We're sitting ducks. We need protection from the people who it's their job to protect and serve us. I pay taxes. They better damn well protect me when I'm a sitting duck in an event of hundreds of thousands of people. I just think that this rhetoric of no police at pride, pride is a riot, blah, 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 blah. Like the police are always against our community. There's a history of that, but we also need this protection. It's, it's a matter of life and death. That's my own personal problem with the LGBT community, but I don't know. Well, I mean, um, the the far lefty branch of the LGBT community, like a lot of yeah, them and I like... get so riled up about it because in my community, where I am in the Bay Area, that's the vast majority of people. So it seems like the whole LGBT community. I know that it's not necessarily. It's like this way in New York. It's like this way in SF. It drives yeah. me crazy, and I think it's important to talk about. Like these are examples of why this matters so much. D is saying, for God's sake, do not fund the police. Thank you. Do not defund the police. You said. Fund. Oh, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stormy saying theologically, are Shias more anti-gay than Sunnis, or the other way around? Um, theologically, they're both extremely anti-gay. Like I don't know. I think they're. I don't think there's a way to measure this, but they all go full out and saying that this is an abomination. Right. So I don't know how you could measure how strongly. They both have hadith uh, that is completely against it. Okay, I think the the level of radicalism uh, there 
and the nature of the radicalism has more to do. So when it comes to religion itself, theologically, it provides you with all everything you need to be against it. Okay, uh, the nature of what uh, many Sunni groups do versus what many Shias do has more to do with recent political trends in the Islamic world uh, and what enemies different groups have been put in, they have been they have been put in front of. Uh, so, for example, the history of Wahhabism is very recent history. Okay, and you know, and the recent uh, and Shia radicalism is even more recent. Okay, so when it comes to the nature of Shia radicalism, you have to look at everything with, uh, after 1979. So this is like that. You, you can go uh, to to see what the targets are and why they're tar just like we, we we discussed like Roe versus Wade. Yeah, right. So the fact that Christians are focusing on abortion, even though there are much greater sins in the Bible, right? You you have to look at it in recent Christian history. You can't just be like, why are they focusing on this? You can't find that in the Bible, okay? So when it comes to Shias, what, why are they doing what they're doing? Yeah, you can see the feel for it in the scripture, but then why are they hyper fixating on something? You have to look at recent history to figure that out. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.